South Africa must have had a huge influence, especially the whole Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And I remember seeing a film called A Long Night's Journey into the Day. And that was about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And it was after David had been killed. And I remember I just, you know, I went to bed for three days and I couldn't face the world after watching that. And um, it, was, it was written on the wall what I was going to do. I mean, when David was killed, uh, the, the army came to tell me he was in the reserves. And I apparently said, you may not kill anybody in the name of my child. Of course, I don't remember that. But I, and I knew almost immediately that I was going to do something to prevent other families from experiencing this pain because, you know, I'm a fixer, but this you can't fix. So you choose, what are you going to do with this pain that stays with you daily? It never goes away. It's always there. Do you harness it to make a difference? And looking at the world today with so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have lost family members from the pandemic. And you should, I mean, India is in desperate straits now. I think to myself, if they look at the work that we do in the parent circle and they see how people can harness their grief to make a difference, then maybe that would get them out of bed in the morning instead of dying with your family member who died because that's what happens, not physically, but many families just disappear, you know, with, with loss. And so it's a choice that you make. He invited me to come to East Jerusalem to meet other bereaved parents. And that's where I met Palestinian mothers, specifically the mothers what got to me. And I looked at them and I realized that, you know, we stood over the grave, the tears were the same color and the pain is the same pain. So why, you know, if we could stand on the stage and talk about nonviolence and reconciliation, wouldn't that be the most powerful example to people who heard us because we're the least likely people to do this. Yeah. And so that's what became my life really. And um, it took over my life. This whole organization has taken over my life from morning to night. I, watching on Zoom, six Protestants, six Catholics, six Israelis and six uh, Palestinians, all talking about victimhood. You know, how people um, hang on to being victims and why. Why do people remain victims? Is it because they're frightened if they give up being a victim that's being disloyal to the person they lost? Or maybe they won't remember them? It's very complicated. Yes. But being a victim holds you back in your life forever. You know, the, the, the moment that I realized, firstly, I realized also immediately that it was one Palestinian that killed my son, not the whole Palestinian nation. And so, that enabled, enabled um, an association which was far above conflict. It became family almost with the people that I met in the parent circle. And um, I understood once I wrote a letter, you know, after they captured the man who killed David, that's when life really became difficult for me because, you know, when there's no face, you can make all kinds of remarkable statements about peace and love and read rubbish poetry and do all those kind of things. But do you really mean it? This is the test. The test is what do you do now that he has this face of this man? And I really didn't sleep for a very long time after they came to tell me they caught him. Because suddenly I realized I can't, I have to walk the talk. You know, I can't do this work if, uh, if I'm not willing. It took three years and I got a letter back through one of the websites saying that I'm crazy. Well, I really, I knew that I was crazy before that. And that um, he killed 10 people on that day to free Palestine. But you see, I knew that um, his parents told us that when he was a very little boy, he saw his uncle violently killed by the Israeli army. And then when he grew up, he lost two further uncles in the second uprising. This whole cycle of violence came into play. 
And I think he really wasn't politically motivated. He just was uh, seeking revenge. And so, um, uh, you know, it was like such a sense of freedom because that's when I gave up being a victim. That's when my life no longer was contingent on what this man does. I want to meet him, but it's not like, you know, this is not gonna stop me from doing the work. I am in integrity with myself. And so I went back to South Africa and that's where we met perpetrators and victims who'd given evidence in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And that's where I was looking personally to understand what the word forgiving means. When I say that I'm grateful, people can't understand what I'm talking about, but um, the ability to touch other hearts and to see them change their mind and understand the consequence and the sanctity of human life is so extraordinary. So what a gift, you know, my child gave me. All the work that we do on the ground is towards creating a process like we these ants, you know, that would create some kind of framework so that people would understand yeah. that you must have a form of reconciliation. Doesn't mean you have to forgive. You know, forgiving is a very personal thing and it's not a prerequisite in the parent circle. The prerequisite is that you believe in nonviolence, that you believe in reconciliation, and that you believe that the occupation must end because the occupation is killing the moral fiber also of Israel, as dreadful as it is for Palestinians. And believe me, it's bad. But what does that do to the soul of Israel? It's frightening. People love to take sides. It makes them feel good about themselves, but they're not helping. If you wanna help me and support what the work we're doing, then talk about looking for reconciliation. Don't tell me how terrible the Palestinians are or how cruel the Israelis are. I actually already know that. But let's try to find a way, you know, to reconcile, to, to admit crimes, to, you know, to do all of the things that a reconciliation process requires.